Hey, hey, hey everyone! Time for another Zodiac Animal Prompt! My patrons voted for the element and animal, and this time the winner was Plant Dragon. Awesome combo! If you would like to vote on the next prompt, you can by joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. That'll also let you be in videos like this one if you want to do the prompts with us. The voting for the next prompt has started over on my Patreon Discord server. I'm excited to get into my own take on this, but before we jump into that, let's look at what my patrons did with this drawing challenge. There are 28 submissions this time. Holy cow. First up, we have Dapplebrook. Oh. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of green dragons today. Very awesome. I love the texture you have on the, the green scaly part. And like the bark-like horns. That's cool. Apologies if I say this name wrong. Arapaima Solosa? Yo! Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> oh, the mushroom spotting and like the mushroom hat and tail. Oh, that is so cool. Oh my god, I love that. Next up we have Creek. Oh, what a cool guy. Oh my god, I love this too. Bark, bark horns. That is, mmm, that's so cool. Like a leaf of mane, a leaf of manes, a mane of leaves. And like, oh, mmm, mmm. This is very tasty. I love the composition you have here. And then like with the little ring in the background too, with the, the, the wood, the wood, sapling crown thing that that's tasty very nice i love it very very pretty greens too i love the choice of greens next we have one from lucky Kaneko. Ooh, oh and leopard spotting ah oh, another one with pretty greens very nice i love seeing some traditional work in here that's awesome and there are some more dragon, plant dragon sketches to go along with it from Lucky Kaneko. Awesome. Oh, I love the little one climbing the tree with the big leaf tail. That is cute. Next up, we have Zwa. Ooh, okay. Cool. Going for just like a more environmental, <laughs> I guess environmental storytelling type one. A skull. Oh. Oh, that was probably fun to do. I really enjoy drawing skulls. This looks awesome. I love the little flower there too. Very nice. Aura is exhausted, gave us. Oh, plant dragons are like coming down from the trees and comforting. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I already love the woods. If little dragons came down to like comfort me, like the forest would just be where I lived all the time. Ara says, the dragons are guardians. This subset, guardians of the forest, have the strongest intuition. They can read human intent when they enter the forest. And when a child seeks solace in the forest, well, they are something to guard as well. Nobody can touch them here. <gasps> oh, dragon allies. I love them. Rainy ferns. Yo, it's like a mossy dragon. I love it. <laughs> Ah, oh, I love the design choice of just like the hanging foil, foil, foliage. I always have a really hard time with that word. But yes, I love that. And then the like, the crispy looking wings. Ooh, yes. There's a lot of design choices I really like going on in this one. Awesome job. Next up, Hobo Hime. <gasps> it's garden and egg. An egg -ug -ug. Oh, I love what a funky little dude this guy is. I like his little sprouts and everything. That's great. This one was submitted by Petya. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, so this one is based on a drawing I did for them, and then they added to it themselves. Yeah, so here's what they had to say about it. They said, uh, this piece was drawn by Tenille, me, back in December, and when I received it, I decided to edit it a bit and put it in line with my dragon fursona. After that, I went on to draw the rest of the body, and now that it is spring, I put him in a plant wreath just in time for the plant dragon prompt. 
That's awesome. Petya also says, it's incredible how welcoming and supportive Tenniel is of other artists of any skill level, and it's great that he's using this series to encourage others to draw. Thank you so much, Tenniel. Oh, you are so welcome. I am, I am just happy to be here to help encourage people. That, that makes me so happy. Next up, CQ Studios. Hey! Oh my god! Okay, so yo, CQ Studios, we, we, oh yeah! I love that. I, we actually have some similar ideas going on. You'll see when I get to my prompt. That's awesome! <laughs> I love the little flower necklace and the little flower basket. That's, mmm, not a flower basket, but, but a, 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 a basket of leaves, yes. Mmm, good. Love it. Next up is Moon Tuft. Ah, uh, yes, good sleeping dragon. Oh, with the pretty purple, like, heather around them and everything. Lovely. Very lovely. Artwork by Finley. Ooh, okay. Oh, ooh, all right. Yeah, I love how you have the, the twigs and the branches going off as, like, bush wings. That's really cool. There's so many cool things you can do with plants and dragons. <laughs> it really is like an endless supply of inspiration and like different things you can do with this. That's so cool. Next up we have Isaac the reindeer. Ooh, oh, more like a snake kind of guy, but he got two arms. Awesome. Good job, Isaac. Beautiful little sunset in the background. Here we have another one by Finley. Oh, ooh, okay. I really like this one. It's like a water spirit kind of plant dragon. Cool. Charlie Draw Stuff. What have you got for us today? The Paradise Trapper. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, man. Just looking at an illustration like this really takes me back to school when you'd get those books that are like, this book's all about dragons or this book's all about like dinosaurs or whatever. This gives me like the, the same very similar vibes. I love that. I love how you have them camouflaging into a plant so they can like trap birds and stuff. Very cool. All right, one from Oranguin. Ooh, very cool colors on the dragon. And again, really cool, like another really cool composition here. Oh, this dragon's serious business. I love it. Awesome job. Spotted time. Oh, just a little baby plant dragon with little baby twiggy horns. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. Willow the Lycera. Ooh, it's another mossy dragon. Oh, this one's much more haunting. Ooh, Willow, I really like how this one turned out. You also wrote a note with it. What does this one say? A, con a clay construct left deactivated for hundreds of years that has been overgrown with plant life. Regaining functionality under mysterious circumstances, they're left with a much different world than they once knew. Strange new feelings unfamiliar to them and nothing in their memory banks but a single name. Maven. Oh, <laughs> that is fun. Awesome. Next up, Soggy Waffles. Oh my god, it's pink. Wow, oh, that is beautiful. Oh, I love your use of line. Like, your line art is fantastic. And, like, I love how you have these, these very flowing shapes that, especially in the, like, the legs and the head that just, like, swoop down into, like, this soft paw or, or the snout or something like that. That's, that's some very appealing, um, like, weight and, and line work. Oh, and I love your concept, too. Very pretty dragon. Awesome. Sapphire Tinted. Eee! Inky Cap. <laughs> oh, what a cute guy! Oh, I love when we get really different takes on the prompt. Oh, that's really cool. Awesome concept. We have another submission from Arapimacolosia. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, man. Oh, 
I love how you have this one all positioned on the branch and what a, mm, he's curious about the little frog. That's so cute. I also really like your line work as well. It's very different from the last one I was commenting about the line work, but yours is very light and sketchy and it brings like this whole other different feeling to it. I love it. Fantastic. Ellery's art on Instagram. Oh, it's a panda dragon. Oh my God. Oh, and you have like, I'm not sure if I'm using the exact correct word here. If this is maybe a slightly different tree, but like little bonsai trees on the tail and like ferns on the paws and then ban like a bamboo forest growing on the back. That is awesome. What a cool idea. Oh, so cool. Awesome job. Oh, I love that. Silver. Yo, Silver! Oh my god, it's a statue! <laughs> you and I are also on the same brainwave, and you'll see why. Oh my god! Oh, that is so cool. I love how broken up and, and old it feels. Very cool. Good job. Frog. <gasps> oh, pretty dragon. Oh, I love it. What a nice character design. Just very lovely. I love the different greens and to highlight it with white and pink too. Excellent choice of colors. Oh, we found Whitney's. Whitney's got another slice of the pie here and yes, more moss dragon. <laughs> I really like the moss dragons. I love the, the hanging aspect of the moss and like how that gives a character a different feel. Big snoot. Oh, I love that this one's like a, like a very swampy dragon. Awesome. All right, we're getting closer to the end here. King facial hair. <laughs> yeah, another mushroom dragon. I love it when it's moss. I love it when it's mushrooms. I love all of these. I love all of the different prompts, but man. The mushrooms and the moss get me excited for some reason. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Great job, King. All right, last one. Stormy Skies Studio. Instagram is stormy underscore skies underscore studio. Ooh, we have a whole little concept art page. I think it's supposed to be plants grow and they fall off in, an early, in a yearly cycle. Cool. Plants depend on what season the animal was born. Ah. Can have horns and pat patagium? Gliding skin? Okay. Bodies turn to plants when they die. Oh. Paws able to weave and tend to plants. Very flexible and long. Awesome concept art. I really like how... How you took the, the concept of a plant dragon and really made it your own thing here. That's awesome. Love it. All right, that was a ton of submissions. Fantastic work, everybody. Holy cow. Wow. So many cool concepts, so many different ideas, some similar ideas, which, you know, means just we're on like the same brainwave and that's awesome too. I, I loved seeing all these. Great work. All right, so I was super excited to get to this prompt, particularly dragons. Dragons do have an important role in my world building. And of course, dragons paired with plants, as we have already seen, is a match made in heaven. If you want to refresh yourself on the specifics of my world building so far, I recommend going back and checking out my videos on time snakes, death sheep, and space rats. But the TLDR that you need to know for this video is that this is a world full of creatures, human and animal and mythical, that are all born into different kinds of magic. And what kind of magic you have is based on where you live and what kind of trees grow near you. Trees hold all of the real magic of this world and grant elemental powers to those born near them. They also give each creature markings that signify what kind of element they have. Now I've decided that for most of this video, I'm going to be switching over to telling you guys a story that I have written. Cause I find that I really start figuring out my world building once I actually just start writing in it and figuring out how exactly I want this world to work. So we're going to do that. 
But first, I'm going to give you guys a brief rundown on how the magic works. So plant magic is considered to be one of the oldest magics of the trees. Creatures who live and learn plant magic do so with a lot of respect and traditions. In fact, many plant magi are deemed as unworthy to practice most higher level magic. In this way, your common plant magi can't really do much in the way of magic, unfortunately, other than caring for their local flora. In order to become a well-trained plant magi, you have to basically be among the ruling populace, and the plant magi don't even have many of those around anymore. The plant kingdom held more power in generations past, but after several wars and struggle for power, the plant kingdom has been subdued greatly, with small villages among the coastlines making up most of the plant kingdom's population, and even their capital is mostly a shell of its former self. Travel in the plant kingdom is uncommon due to how overgrown their land is, and with all of its citizens being deprived of more helpful magical skills, the people feel like even taking back their own land is an overwhelming task. The one thing that the monarchy in the plant kingdom is good at doing, other than placing restrictions on its populace, is making deals of trade with neighboring nations. Plant magi lands have been devastated and passed through war, but the kingdom has flourished in terms of trade. Basically anything can grow in plant kingdom lands, and the prestige of plant magi grown crops does yield a lot of weight on the market. But deep in the depths of the plant kingdom's overgrown land, there are a number of secrets hiding for treasure hunters who are brave enough to look. Ancient ruins of cities that once belonged to dragons, and the ones in the plant kingdom are more ancient than most. Oh, this is it. Sasha wouldn't let her nerves get the best of her. Her paws crackled like firecrackers. Hurriedly, she shook her arm, and a nervous tingle swept down her whole spine. Okay, maybe she couldn't stop her nerves, but she could control it. The ornate cave entrance loomed before them, calling them to explore its depths, daring them to enter. Sasha had been mentally preparing herself for weeks out on sea, but now that they were here, she could scarcely believe it. The ruins of Radix Strachan, home of the once brilliantly terrifying plant dragons, and the birthplace of all magic. Even after centuries of dilapidation, the entrance to the city was imposing and held an air of mysterious sophistication that Sasha had barely seen anywhere growing up in the Isles. Even after all this time, the plants around the doorway seemed to grow in a way that only added to the beauty of the intricately carved wood preserved pillars guarding each side of the entrance. Massive carved dragons with flowers and plants growing perfectly and elegantly around their bodies. Sasha felt like she was being watched by their rosebud eyes. Are you ready, Sasha? A deep, gravelly female voice pulled Sasha out of her own head. Captain Nautilus Saltz slung a large amount of rope over her shoulder and walked over to Sasha's side. The large, white bear blocked the sun streaming down through the trees and loomed over her. Sasha glanced from her captain to the wooden pillars. How come no one's ever tried to take these? Sasha asked. She was sure that the Light Dominion elites would pay a killing to put an authentic piece of dragon history in their silly little gardens. The fact that they remained here in near-perfect condition had to mean something. Captain Saltz took a step toward them cautiously. The rest of the crew seemed to sense the captain's unease and stopped what they were doing to watch. Blanche, the lynx, jogged over to Sasha and whispered, What's up? What's got Nautilus attention? I did, Sasha whispered back. These pillars are suspicious. Blanche nodded slowly, looking between them. Adair, Captain Nautila called. Sasha looked back as their resident expert from the local port pushed his way through the crowd. The twiggy antelope pushed up his glasses as he hurried to the captain's side. Can we dismantle these? Nautila asked. You're the plant magi here. Has this city never been raided before? How are these still here? 
Adair stepped closer to the right pillar, holding out a hand to sense the magic at work. Sasha felt a flare of her usual jealousy when other creatures used their magic freely. Another crack of sparks threatened to pop at her fingertips, but Blanche placed a large comforting paw on her shoulder. Black Wolf took a deep breath. Oh, th well, th this is incredible. Adair blinked back at them in surprise. A gleam in his eye foreshadowed that a lengthy and passionate tirade about plant growth was incoming. Sasha could feel the whole crew tense, but Nautila gave Adair a look that simply said, The short version, if you please. Um. Adair bounced slightly back and forth from hoof to hoof. Oh, we, 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 we've known about Radix Draken for, for ages, but many plant magi are too afraid to enter, let alone go near it. Even if it is the birthplace of all trees. Even the dragons abandoned it before they became extinct. Uh, but I'm sure the, the rumors of deadly plant traps are just silly superstition, he hurriedly explained. Nautila made a rolling motion with her paw to hurry Adair along. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, come look at these markings. Adair beckoned them forward. The whole crew of ragged pirates waddled forward slowly to squint at what the academic little antelope was pointing at. Sasha decided to stay exactly where she was, crossing her arms and kicking the dirt. The antelope ran his hands gently across the carving. As you can see here, I, I've just never seen anything like it, the kind of magic prowess needed to create a spell like this. <sighs> I mean, it's the only reasonable explanation, but it boggles the mind. You see, these divots in the wood indicate that the wood was severed here. I can feel it, too. Completely severed. And yet still in one whole piece. Many pirates blinked their confusion and stopped leaning forward, shrugging to each other. Captain Nautila ran a finger over the carving, thinking deeply. So... You're saying that this statue has been chopped down before. Adair clapped his hands together. <laughs> Not just once before. I'd say that this particular artifact has probably been dismantled into pieces numerous times before. <laughs> and if I wager a guess, reassembled elsewhere once it reached its desired location. The captain leaned back and stroked her chin. And it just grows back, huh? A greedy smile spread across her face, and she turned back to the rest of the crew, who looked eagerly back. That is indeed fascinating, little Sprout Magi. Crew, be sure to bring some saws. We'll make a fortune on this. Adair leaned against the pillar with a smug look on his face as the rest of the crew cheered and started heading back to the boat. There are two pillars here, Captain. I'm sure that you and your fine crew wouldn't mind taking one of these back to my place for research purposes. Sasha scoffed. If she had her way, Sasha would have dropped the dinky little deer into the ocean before they even left port. Whatever was inside these ruins, she was sure they didn't need the help of some weak little plant magi. And of course, he offered to come along for free once he overheard where they were going. All for research purposes. But he was obviously just in it to steal their loot. Nautila gave Adair half a glance. Of course, Adair. It's the least we can do for all your help. Sasha knew what that tone of voice meant and smiled. Adair would be lucky if he made it out of the ruins alive. Nautila would rather fight sea monsters than give up loot that belonged to them and the rest of the crew. Her tail wagged subtly as she left to help the rest of the crew with preparations. Blanche was packing the last of his things when Sasha hopped up on the railing to sit. I'm pretty sure Adair is testing the last of the captain's nerves. Blanche chuckled softly. <laughs> oh, we won't have to worry about our little guest for much longer. We just need him to check for traps. I almost feel for the guy. That caused a real laugh. <laughs> no, you don't. Blanche growled a chuckle. You've been trying your best not to set the bastard on fire since he stepped onto the ship. And you know, you know we all trust you, Sasha. We appreciate your restraint, but maybe you should work on that temper of yours. 
Blanche gave her a playful jab. Sasha shoved back and gave Blanche a smile, mostly for his sake. Yeah, I know. Not many ships would risk having someone like me on board. I guess I should be thankful Captain Nautila feels the same. Nautila spoils you is what you mean. Pretty sure that mama bear has adopted you. She just can't help but pick up strays like us. Blanche flung his bag over his shoulder. His broad shoulders squared up and he looked Sasha in the eyes and smiled. Got your knife? <sighs> of course. Good. Deep breath, Sash. We're going into a plant ruin that hasn't properly been watered in centuries, so things might be a bit... Flammable, she added dryly. Yeah, that. Just keep a cool head. A little flurry of snow landed on Sasha's head as Blanche chuckled. Stop that. She smacked his paw away. Captain Saltz left a crew of a dozen or so to take care of the pillars, and then the rest of them padded cautiously into the cave. The cave floor was covered in spongy moss, and from the ceiling hung layers and layers of ivy. It was impossible to know how far down they'd have to go to reach the city, as ivy blocked their view everywhere they looked. Sasha was beginning to understand why no one ventured in here. The vines tickled her everywhere, setting her nerves on edge, and the mossy floor squelched with every footstep. The darkness of the cave couldn't be exaggerated. The only light came from the only crew member with light magic, a young ferret called Angel, who perched on the captain's shoulder. A little orb of light bounced on top of their head, but did next to nothing for visibility. If it wasn't for the rope that tied them together, the crew might have lost each other as soon as they entered, and everyone was getting tangled up in vines or slipping on the floor. Thanks to all the vines, Sasha wasn't even sure which direction was forward or back anymore, but Nautila pushed onward, her resolve clear. If they actually managed to find this dragon city and get the loot back to the Light Dominion, it could change their lives. Dragon artifacts alone were high in demand, and the Light Dominion had already scoured and divided every scrap of Light Dragon treasure from their own kingdom and were hungry for more. Authentic plant dragon treasure was sure to turn some heads. Blanche gave the ivy surrounding them an icy stare, probably wishing that he knew enough ice magic to freeze the plants and then let them blast their way through. Captain, I don't like this one bit. It's just ivy, Blanche. Get a hold of your nerves. Adair, tell my boy that there's nothing wrong with the ivy. The antelope fidgeted. Um, maybe I should have stayed back with the other crew. Sasha growled. The whole reason you're here is to help us look for traps. Or is that a load of bullshit? Adair gulped, and Sasha could see his knees shake. If I had to wager, I guess. Uh, the dragons of old probably could tell these plants to part like a curtain, and they just fly straight in. Astonishing, really. No one's performed plant magic on that scale since the dragon era, and they might have been able to even sense intruders moving through the vines, so it would have been a very effective trap. But the dragons are all gone, so we needn't worry about that. She rolled her eyes. No traps, then. Just annoying vines. Captain, I might be able to clear a path for us. The crew stopped. Nervous whispers ushered from everyone, and Blanche put his paw on her shoulder again, obviously wanting to protest. Sash... Get off me, Blanche. I know I can do it. Save us all this creepy-ass cave and get us to the city faster. She pushed him off and looked up at Captain Nautila. On her shoulder, Angel crossed their arms and looked disapprovingly. Sasha bared her teeth at them. The small antelope beside the captain pushed up his glasses and squinted at her. <laughs> How in the world would you clear a path through this? Sasha glared at him. And for the first time, he seemed to notice the rings in her eyes and her ashy freckles. Maybe here in the dark, the glow finally caught his attention. His jaw dropped. You're... you're... ow! You... you would try to... 
His stammering continued as he turned to the captain. It is against the law. Her kind are not even allowed in my country. If she uses her magic here, it could not only cause untold devastation, but start another war. Why in the world would you keep a... Nautila clamped a large paw over the deer's head to shut him up, and he squirmed with indignation. Nautila took a few moments to assess the situation, then looked at Sasha. You can control it? Sasha nodded. Nautila nodded back, slowly, then turned to the crew, shoving Adair back into the ranks. Everyone, step back. Blanche, keep your guard up. Blanche did as he was told, and Nautila stepped over to Sasha, who was memorizing the terrified looks of each and every one of her crewmates who were doubting her. A chill emanated from Blanche, and she knew he was prepared to tackle her in an icy death grip if she messed this up. Nautila shook her shoulder. Sasha, look at me. If you sense your magic hitting any roots or trees, I need you to swear to me to back off immediately. Got it? Yes, ma'am. It won't be a problem. Nautila gave her a pat on the head, and Sasha rolled her shoulders with excitement, untying the rope and tossing it back to Blanche. You can't seriously be doing this, came another protest from Adder. This is in violation of the treaty? Line it up, Sasha. We're ready. Sasha took a deep breath, those words sending a buzzing of joy through her whole self. The sparks at her fingertips popped, crackled, and then whooshed to life. Hot, scorching flames pushed their way out of her, and she exhaled, throwing magical fire out in a spiral cone in front of her. Heat exploded out of her like a cannon blast. With each sizzling tendril of ivy, Sasha felt like she was consuming a delicious five-course meal. Her fire had a difficult time grabbing on to the wet plants for only a moment, but then their hunger gobbled them up and wilted them in seconds. Sasha grinned as her fire continued to consume everything. The moss at her feet steamed and slowly turned to ash. She felt the reaches of her magic finally find something other than ivy and moss, and the fire inside of her cried out for more, but Sasha pulled back. Turning the fire off took all of Sasha's strength, her willpower. She just wanted to let her fire ravage the whole city, take out the forest surrounding it, and then maybe she wouldn't feel this jarring emptiness inside when her magic was contained. Ash and smoke made it harder to concentrate and breathe, but she quenched her fire and fell to one knee. Silence. The smoke pillowed away softly down the cave tunnel, now free of the irksome ivy and wet moss. When the smoke cleared, a light appeared in the distance. Blanche cheered. That's it! Good work, Sasha! Captain Nautilus strode over and lifted Sasha back up to her feet. Good job, kid. Let's go check this out. And there we have it. I know that this time was a little different since the plant dragon prompt was only the backdrop to the story, but I had a ton of fun writing this piece and exploring the world and these characters in it. I'm curious if this will affect what prompt gets chosen next. If you would like to submit your own plant dragon, let me see it by uploading it to the fan art link in the description. We look at fan art on every Saturday stream and I love seeing everyone's creativity with these. Have an awesome day, everyone, and I hope you stay inspired.